These are, these are kids who were sold a dream that they're good and they're great and all you have to do is go to college and then you'll be fine. And then they get out and they realize there is no jobs for them even though they have a degree. And this, their, their use of drugs is a reflection of a dream that they were sold, they were lied to. Different opinions. Not necessarily strong. Different, just strong. You know, our opinions should be strong, right? Reflexible. Reflexible. If you're here to bend those opinions, let me hear something. You're all. Original Maryland, Prince George County. Who do you think? Who do you think? You mean like my family? or? No, no, no. I just wanted to know, like, where you grew up listening to music, because that changes a lot of people too. I just wanted to know. Feel about certain genres not being present today as they were in the past. Like jazz and disco. You did. You said I jazz did, and disco in the same thing. Okay, that's great. Okay. I have music. Well, that's fine. But it made me realize that I wasn't just listening to music. I was listening to But it made me realize, I think oftentimes we romanticize the past and we like to paint it in hindsight as we want to see it. I don't know how many of you all are aware that at disco's height, it was a hated genre. It was a hated genre by all musical enthusiasts. Even though a lot of times the producers who were producing disco hated it. And she asked me nostalgically why it's not here today. And it made me wonder if we romanticized the past and we didn't realize that popular music has always been king in any form, whether it was jazz and bebop or big band or rock and ballads and easy listening. There's always been a popular form of every genre and that popular form has always been dominant. So to think that music is any, is any worse of a, a predicament today, I think is false. I don't think music is as worse off now as it is ever before because popular music has always been popular music and it's always been dominant. And I guess that's what you want me to come say. It's open to the floor. Exactly. Do you pass the mic? No, no, no. Okay. So I have a perspective and I've been thinking about this a lot. So. As a, as a creative writer or whatever that I do, and I know a lot, a lot of artists. I was in Miami recently, and I, and I was talking to a friend of mine that I think it's so unfair that most of the artists, pop, mostly in hip hop or even some pop culture, that they have to be under the influence of some kind of drugs in order for them to write, be feel, feel creatively free. And yet, you think it's okay to win a award when you kind of cheated your way to creativity. Why can't you just write as a normal, a normal state of mind? And I was, I'm always curious about that because I don't think that Stevie Wonder had to get high to write. Uh, oh, you'd be surprised! Oh, 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 and now, oh, and now we are back to the man's side of the past. Well, I'm going to tell you what Stevie got out of wedlock. The drugs and music have just why do you like why is why is it that why is that you have to be why is that you have to be you have to have a out of the out of body experience to really get connected to your creative self. I mean because music is an out of body experience. I mean when you sit down when you sit down and you listen to music and you listen to a song and you listen to I don't know, like all right, let's go to New York State of Mind, because it's the first thing that came to mind. Like, when I sit there and I listen to New York State of Mind, like Nas, in case for some reason somebody hasn't heard it, I'm, I'm not, like, I feel like I'm there. Like, I feel like I'm there, I'm listening, I'm, I'm watching him. Like, I can sit there, and with the minute that beat drops, like, your whole, it changes your whole attitude, your whole mood, you're transported. Yeah, you're transported, exactly. But it's also the fact that, particularly with hip-hop, hip-hop is such an inclusive um, culture Well. That's a problematic statement, but y'all know. <laughs> like you, you, we allow so many different um, types of music, and we sample from so many different things, and we sample from so many different cultures. So at no point is there any aspect of hip hop that's going to be like you shouldn't be able to do this to do what you, you do. The only thing that we're supposed to be hard on about that we don't is that you shouldn't put your hands on people. But outside of that, it's like if you, if you choose to drink, if you choose to smoke, the RZA is one of the greatest producers of all time. And the RZA will tell you, like there are old Scratch magazines back and down the thing, that he would get like a new beat machine 
a UMP and you get high as fuck and you not look at, like you not look at the instrument and then just start creating. Like there's something powerful about that. Do you have any coping mechanisms? Do you drink? Do you smoke? Do you meditate? Do you do anything to help you get over something? Play my guitar. That's what does the guitar do for you when you play it? Just play. Makes it feel good. All the times with creativity, people are inhibited, whether it be through alcohol or any type of substance, and you need something to unlock yourself, to loosen up in order to be creative. It's, it's a coping mechanism. I'm not it's a crush. That. What I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is that, well, that you and it's not exclusive to rap, I'm by saying the way. that if you fast forward, like, it's a coping mechanism for you to create, and then you see how the music is being promoted as well. Right, it's like there's a placement of that culture of drugs and some kind of materialism as the way of promoting the music, and I think that it's very. And then you, and then you think that the undeveloped minds that consume the music, they don't, they're not there to when you're creating it as part of the part of you using drug, whatever. It, I, I'm not, I'm not against smoking or drinking. I just think that you shouldn't win a Grammy if half of your record was written, was written while you were high. So what about, what about That's an opinion. Right. Right. That's, That's an opinion. opinion. And you mean it. That's an opinion. 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 That's an don't sit in the wrist up because he was coming down. And then we tank the wrist. Last thing you do is you can wait. Everything you do is you can wait. Don't listen to it. That's the point. That's the point. That's the point. All right, Corey, you have something to say. I mean, I guess at that point, I would ask. Wait, wait, wait. We're going to give people a chance to talk. To that point, I would ask if if somebody broke the New York Times record for the most best selling book ever. But they did that shit off off the of China White. Do you think that's not true? Exactly. Semi exactly. 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 I mean, like <laughs> only Bill Kimberley. My oh, so okay. So or, well, let me pose this question. Do you think that because essentially it sounds like you're saying that these additives are added to their creative process and stuff like that, right? No, I think that I I believe that they are able to create that they should be able to create the same level of work body of work without the help without so the that, 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 that which means to me which means to me that which means to me that rather than rather than you take your time to get to know what are those things that don't get there people always find to easy escape to create something great. So, so what would you say what would you say to the person who is Zan now would take a Zan what would you say to the person who uses these drugs but their music isn't good? Same thing. I mean, that's not really, I don't know what to do. I'm just saying. We can't hear the person speaking right now. Can y'all keep it down in the back, please? Yes, sir. Okay, so um, a counter question to your point is, how many legends are you willing to discredit? I Why do we take away the, oh, the, uh, the metal right. as a result oh, of them being on the drug? To so that's 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 to that point, that's 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 point that's 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 that's
starts painting, all we see is lines. But then once they're done, after using these drugs that they feel they need to use to bring them back down, you're like, that's a masterpiece. And if you, and it's not just music. You're talking Picasso. You're talking everybody. Everybody. Van Gogh, Van Gogh made Starry Nights on hallucinogenics. On hallucinogenics. I'm going to I think it's important to understand that. I'm speaking also from Jared from the Cultural Theory Project. Right? Because Van Gogh is not just a person. He's 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 a person.
people say they don't miss one rap, but at that time in the nineties, that was what was happening. You know, is is today? Because I could go back to this neighborhood. Now it's gentrified. Sure. I grew up in this neighborhood. I moved away to Atlanta for a long time. Whatever, whatever. I saw somebody get murdered around the corner from here. You know what I mean? Like I literally saw it because guns were like that back then. So like what you were hearing in the raps were literally what was happening in New York and Brooklyn, and of course Philly and wherever. But that really was what was happening. So where is popular society so now that most now. music? We can all yeah. agree that hip hop is one of the fastest genres to to report on what's going on in society and reflect it in music. Art imitates life, life imitates art. Hip hop does it well. So if so much music is dedicated to the use of drugs, what does that say about society now? Are we a society addicted to substances? Is that yes. are, we, are we coping? A society, uh, society that's in addicted to social media, probably. That's a substance. And that's a substance. the addiction yeah, of the feedback yeah, from that, right? Like, it's transferred now. Okay. I would say it's different. It's a different drug. It's a different drug. I mean, there's studies would about the agree? adrenaline and so the way it's that affects like like your brain anyway. Likes, the way likes affect your brain now. Sure. It's like a thing. Sure. Yeah. You know, we also have to keep in mind how, how capitalism influences that as well, right? Because how much of it is these artists are dope, and how much of it was labels saying these are just because these artists are dope, right? Setting, setting the trend, right? There was, there was a point in my life where I used to like say that music is a lot like food, right? You have music that you that you care for, that you think has deep content, and that's like your healthy food, right? And then there's music that like you can listen to sporadically, but it's not your life. Like, if you live in the trap all your life, and that's what you listen to, okay, but not everybody listens to trap music. So you, you take it in, like, if you take it in, like, it measures, right? But the problem is that with labels, labels will sell you one and tell you it's the other. And but it's really that, no more, there's no labels though, that shit is straight up social media. What, if a nigga got a million, if a nigga got a million followers, like breaking labels, like, if a nigga got a million followers, and your man think he cool, now my man think he cool. Right. Ain't no, ain't no labels. Niggas is just popular. Like nigga, I could be one of the most popular niggas in the room, but have trash music and it's lit. I got a, I got a, I got a show on Friday. I'm not even getting paid, but I got a show on Friday. I got a show on Saturday. I got a show on Sunday. And from all of that shit, I made a hundred dollars. I'm gonna go buy some rings, nigga. <laughs> one of my mans is the plug for some weed. So now it's lit. And my Instagram will look like I look like Ain't no, ain't no labels. That shit is just get your shit up. Charlie Kwan is not signed. He's a, he's. A independent artist and he made a point to sign to anyone because I have say who? Who again? Sorry. 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 that comes next. Now, the difference between hip hop and a lot of other genres is that we're the youngest genre of music. Like, our founding fathers are still alive. These niggas are still breathing, right? Like, so it's still, it, 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 it's still evolving, right? So 
I teach hip hop education, yeah. right, oh, in the yeah. South Bronx. Yeah. Right a lot of cats, yo, these kids, yeah. they, they don't know yeah. their history, right? Right? Yeah. right? It, and it's in their hood, right? Yeah. right? So, but who, but whose responsibility is that? It's our responsibility, right? So, so, and, and to your point, right, most said hip hop is going wherever the people are going. True. Right? So, the same thing with the, 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 the over glorification of, of drugs and music, yo, it's always been present. Maybe the way that, one, how we consume music affects the way that we digest it. My man was saying over here earlier, the way that, the way that it, 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 it's, it's um, perpetual in social media and in culture right now. All that shit all goes back in to us, yo. We control that. The history from everything, from understanding lyricism to understanding the elements, like, you can say that's all old school, old head shit, but then, but then, but then we get mad at young niggas for not knowing. Oh, but I know. For that for not knowing. I know where it's going. I think, I think part of the whole, I think part of this whole issue is the fact that times have changed in the sense where, you know, like, like my man said, it's about popularity, right? A lot of these kids now are looking at rap as a quick come up. Yeah, it's true. But they always like, like, but, but, but hold on, hold on. But the difference was, the difference was, to get to the level of popularity that they have now. Back, back in the day, when you was coming up, you had to be nice to get there. It wasn't no gimmick. It wasn't no like if you come up with a hook and a dance, you go. Yeah. 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 So what's the greatest distance between being the man and 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 not? Now, because of social media and because my man was like, yo, I can have a hundred thousand followers on the gram and on, on on Twitter and be and be the truth. And back in the day, that shit didn't exist. Put up there was this You got bars? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who had to be? It was showing school. It was not. Wait, wait, wait. No one. No. Shut the hell up. Wait, wait, wait. 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 Before that, bars wasn't necessary for them. Bars, you got a big daddy. So bars now have no, they have no weight in hip hop anymore. Nobody's trying to like to hip hop. No, hold on, hold on. Top selling artists have bars. No, they don't need to say that. Kendrick's all right. Now you got to remember what you're going. That's that's what I'm going. That's what I'm going. Hold on, that's what I'm going. So the rappers that we're looking for, Kendrick's dead, J Cole. Who'd you just say? Um, Nas. Yeah. Anybody, anybody that we that I personally listen to that I'm putting on in my playlist right now has bars. But people who are popular, who are getting the labels that don't exist but are still putting money behind them, they have no bars, and that's what that's what's popular. And to the social media point, when our when hip hop started, it started in your hood and it grew. It, it went to Jersey, it went to Philly, then it went to Atlanta, Houston. Like it, it touched different bases after being touched on the radio. But now with social media. What, people, what we don't, what we seem not to understand is we're a microcosm in the entire world of music, right? So if they're popping in black, in black popular culture, we're like, oh, they lit. But it's a whole nother, we're 10% of the 100. There's a whole nother percent. So if they got a million followers and only 100,000 is black and 900,000 is middle-aged white or suburban white kids and that's following their life, it's not from us that they're getting their notoriety. That's not, that's not our music. So like, that's the perfect example. That's yeah, the neighborhood. Matter, you said what? Like, you see how, like, I right, when Nas was in Queensbridge, he got a shit rocking in Queensbridge, and, and then, then he took over the world. Like, he and then they're rapping. And then they're rapping. That's it. This is what the difference is. We got to let go. The okay. same way. Okay, so that, like, okay. I'm a little older, probably, than most people in here. And I will say. No, I'm going to say. I'm going to say. No, it's over. It's a Hip hop now is not like how hip hop was. Jazz, when Miles Davis was doing jazz, at a certain point it became Kenny G, right? We're seeing the Kenny G of hip hop. Kenny G was dope. No, we're seeing it not. Kenny G was good though. It's not good. It's a tie all together. His point, his point. It's a tie all together. It's an observation that I've, I've noticed. Regionalism is dying. Word, word, right. And that's due to the internet. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. I'm from the DC area, this is New York. It was a time where, where we were wearing it back home, it was completely different than New 
grew up. Yep. Everybody wears the same things now. There was a time when I grew up where there were certain genres of music you just didn't listen to. Or you would be made fun of. Everybody yeah. listens to everything now. That's right? true. There was a time where I could tell where somebody was from by the way they spoke. You can't anymore. Everything is but becoming an album. About blues, you could say the but, blues used to be no, but in Tennessee, it is, it is, it is at, in Memphis. It's like it global. It's like global warm. It's an exponential rate right now. Yeah. It is moving at a you much faster rate. You could say about jazz. Jazz and Harlem was different. Think, the think about this. Think, think about how many things took. It, think about how many things took a decade to change when we were younger. Think about a fashion trend. On how long it would pop off well, New York no, well, the rest of the country would have. No, but I get that. But technology has changed that. But I'm saying that us sitting here talking about how hip hop is not what we used, what it used to be, and it's not like lyric, lyric based or whatever, that's how it's always been. Like in jazz, when they were doing, you know, bebop, and they were going off the head, off their head, is the same way like freestylers used to freestyle off the head. Absolutely. And it changed. Absolutely. And folks had to let go and say, okay, I'm gonna embrace what the young cats are doing. And eventually it became commercial, right? And it was like Kenny G doing his like elevated music. And it changed. But does and that then, make it right? And then, but does that make it right? Let's be honest with you. Listen, listen, listen. If I got to yeah. 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 just listen to a bunch of little Uzi and be cool with that, I'm going to kill myself. If I'm going to be cool with that, I'm going to kill myself. Yo, that's what you're saying. 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 Yo, it was like, I'm going to kill myself. I'm like, no, I'm not going to listen to you. But to your point, what you're saying is that. But to your point, what you were saying about the internet, one thing that we, we can say, um, despite the job that the internet has given us, is that you know what, there's always, whatever it is you're looking for in music, you, you, find, you will you find something. Yeah, like, yeah, people, yeah. That, yeah. people yeah. tell me it's an underground rap, and it's like, all right, mixtapes, but like, mixtapes is like anything that K Slate put out like after the drama hour, but then that's not the same underground as someone who listens to MF Doom, yes. or someone who knows who yes. yes. or someone who yeah. knows yeah. technique, atmosphere, Tech blue, exile, like yeah. there's all yeah. these yeah. different things, so we, we can say that wh however it is you feel about mainstream, I don't think we, we came to talk about mainstream music in the century, right, we came here to talk about hip hop, the culture, and we came here to talk about rap, and music, music and just how it's grown. And how it's grown, 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 to his point, you're talking about the evolution of, 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 of music as it happens, right? We're talking about preserving the culture as what like as what it's been and being able to embrace what's happening now, right? To that point as well, like yo. I know where I want, if I want lyrics, if I want raw bars, yo, yes. I know hey, I'm dog, you like my own shit? Right. Go buy my old album. Yes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's like, I don't I mind that. digging in the crates, yeah. right? But at the same time, because I am a practitioner of this culture and I believe in it, I still wanted to represent and look in a certain field, right? So then I look for the Coles, I look for the Kindreds. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm looking for. now. But once again, for everybody that wants the, you know, the the, the G Herbo and you know what I'm saying and no yachty. Oh, that's what I'm saying. 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 Oh, that's what I'm that's what you want, it's there. You can have that. But I think what you're talking about, yes, is that mainstream, is that's what they're pushing. Right, there was a time when the industry, or at least those of us that had the control, was able to promote and produce Stretch and Bob Beetle. They had a, they had a, an institution, right, that sustained the culture and it sounded and looked the way that we wanted it to feel. When you had the mainstream kicking that bullshit, cool. But then there was other people who were luminaries in the culture that was still giving us that real shit. And I feel like that's the difference between maybe then and now. Like it's still happening in pockets. But I feel like it happens more so in vacuum. But now it happens individually because it, because you're given this generation of music and this generation in general is all about we need to show our own value. Right. So just like you said with the, with, the, with the Instagram posts, all right, you don't have to think I'm dope, but I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna have to grind out, I'm gonna have to do the legwork, I'm gonna have to go to shows, I'm gonna have to put together these projects and make people recognize it because nobody would have told me that ten years ago they would have thought a kid would make an album about fucking Jesus and a branch. That's amazing. 
That's a big deal. Independent. Independent. That's a big deal. We wouldn't have thought that was going to happen. Jesus was a big deal when it dropped. Jesus was a big deal when it dropped. Right? And we didn't think that was going to be that popping either. We were like, oh, shit. Oh, now we've lost a long time. I wanted to tie in some of the things that a lot of people said. Um, I think music, especially hip hop, is a big reflection of the times. So I feel like a lot of us, because we grew up in the 90s or whatever, or we're born in that time, we have nostalgia till that type of music. So we hold nostalgia towards music that was coming up in the 90s. But the music that's coming forward now is coming from a completely different place than from when it was in the 90s. Like a lot of the people that were making music in the 90s, like hip hop artists like Nas, you know, Jay-Z, whoever was coming up in that time, it was really a way to get out of the struggle. And what they were rapping about was a reflection of the things that they saw and they lived through every day. A lot of the things now is a consumeristic culture, which is, it's a competition of who could give me the newest, who could give me the hottest, and a lot of it is because of social media and like the presence that that brings to people. So it gets old quick. You could have somebody give you a dope ass album and two days later you're hunting for the new thing. Well, so this, to tie it with you, you raised a very good point. And then he said that people are no longer digging, but they feel like the music being created in a vacuum. I have a similar answer. It's due to oversaturation. Mm -hmm. People are not making music in a vacuum, it's oversaturated. Right. And that's where the difficulty comes from. Yeah, it's we just have pure so oversaturation. Much access to content all the time because of the internet and media. It gets old really quickly. Right? Yeah. And that and to tie it into the drug thing, I think drugs has been tied to music since the beginning of time. Like probably Mozart was doing drugs when he was sure. <laughs> I think what's changed is the way that people use the drugs, I guess, because it's like the selling versus the taking. In the 90s, it was all about using drugs to get out of the hood, get out of the struggle and everything. I, and, but and you gotta think about, in that time, those kids who didn't have the resources to get out of the hood and travel, you had Nas rapping about Egyptians and pyramids and he had never even stepped out of Queensbridge. So maybe him smoking weed was able to mo open his mind to experience that. Versus now, these kids, they, or whoever's coming up now, it's more about just living in that moment and taking those drugs and, you know, get searching the next new high. And then they just spit out whatever comes and people don't, love don't it. They dig it out. Reflection of their society? I think these, I absolutely These, think are, these are kids who were sold a dream that they're good and they're great and all you have to do is go to college and then you'll be fine. And then they get out and they realize there is no jobs for them even though they have a degree. And this, their, their use of drugs is a reflection of a dream that they were sold. They were lied to. They were all lied to. I think it's a reflection because I live in an area that's considered a relatively poor part of the Bronx. And I walk around and people, I'm from Massachusetts, I'm from Boston, so people come to where I live in New York and they're like, this is where you live? And there's people in the place where I live that is considered a poverty stricken area and they're walking out with brand new smartphones, like better than mine. <laughs> So I think that's a, that, that's a whole other conversation about capitalism and African Americans being the first people born into it. But that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> so like in the music industry, they try to make us feel lost. And I know you're talking about food. If I listen to him, I'm just gonna die. But literally, like he's talking about his ex girlfriend and ex tour. But I don't feel that because I can't. I can't relate to someone who does so much drugs that they don't know where they at, you know what I mean? Um, a Boogie, that's one that's somebody who just like, yo, he's amazing, but you're losing yourself. You're losing yourself because you're trying to make that one hit. And it's just like a lot of people turn to like Afro, Afro punk or like someone who's like talking real shit because the hip hop industry, like, where is it? Where is it right now? Because when I listen to a hip hop artist besides J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, I don't even know where I'm at. Unless I'm trying to beat somebody up or beat my ex up because, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I just did Meek Mill because I'm about to shoot this person's house up, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I don't think so. 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 I don't think so
to as far as like they're, 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 you, they're, 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 you don't live for them. So. They, they're, they're there, but in the industry wise, I don't use the mainstream. But how or, how important is any industry right now? With the internet, with Amazon, with all these things, how important is any industry? I, don't, I, feel like, I feel like, okay, I feel like people choose to, to get fine and stuff like that because the money's there. But if you listen to like people on SoundCloud and stuff like that, like I listen to this one artist who is like, he talked about his relationship with his parents and stuff like that. That's something I go through because I don't have a relationship with my mother at all. Does he do a good job? He, he does an amazing job, but people are not saying. Welcome in. 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 Fun other than something that they have to go through or have to go through. Like, yeah. All right, I'm not gonna front. I like two chains. I work out on chains. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> But like, 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 I know you just don't listen to music when you're down and out and depressed. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 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 I'm staring at a room of people that do, for the most part, you would deem counterculture, who, who go another route to find facts and knowledge, etc. Right. Nearly every person, when they claim about a person that they listen to, this person has been identical. You all are listening to the same things. When there's tons of music out there, that's true. but you all are naming the exact same people exactly. that are your go-to people, which means you are being facilitated to just like the mainstream. Mm. You're no different, mm. but you think you are. But you both listening. Everyone is listening to say, "When well, I don't listen to that bullshit, I listen to." Daddy ah, and, <laughs> and you're no different. <laughs> you're, you're being sold something based on subscription. I wear my hair like this, I shop like this, I do these things, I go to these events, I go to these type of festivals, therefore, this is the artist that they will sell to me. And believe me, all of you all think of this illusion that labels aren't here anymore, and that there's, there's such thing, that there's such thing as independent artists. There isn't. There isn't. They're all, they're all backed by major labels. And the shadows, all of them. They came in with millions of dollars, all of them. And you are all, you ever go to this, uh, a cereal aisle? And you pick out all these different choices of cereals, but you don't know that they're actually all made out of cereal. That's what's happening right now. Like, you're not really digging. But everyone's complaining that there's nothing there, but you're all shopping in the same aisle. That's the thing is that I, like, when I was a big person, I was a very guilty person of when, like, I was a music shamer. Like if I learned that somebody was listening to Two Chains when and now I love Two Chains, but when he was first coming out, I just be like, Oh, you listen to that trash. No, you listen you need to listen to this. He's speaking some real shit. Like and and now I realize that so much of enjoying music is not putting yourself in a box and saying, I'm not gonna listen to this because all he's saying is stupid shit. There's a time and place for everything. Like you could be walking down the street and you wanna listen to something that empowers you, enlightens you. So you put on Kendrick in your headphones, but but sometimes you at a party and you want to listen to two chains and you want to turn up and some Kendrick shit is not gonna do it for that. So you, I don't think that I don't think you should shut it. I really want to know how people discover this. Pandora. Pandora? Pandora, social media, just going Algorithm, to different shows, local shows around here. There was actually one in Long Pedro a couple nights ago that they had local artists. And you trust these avenues to deliver new music to you? I trust that I might find something I like. I trust that if I go in there with an open mind and not automatically shutting myself out, that there could be something new that I like. But you, like you know you're solicited to, even on those streams. I absolutely know I'm okay. solicited to, but I think once you close off your mind, you're putting yourself in the exact box where they want you to be. Like, I'm going to be the neo, soul, like, hippie artist, like, wear my hair like this, everything. That's, that's the image that you project right there. Or if you, the lean, drinking, drug doing, like, whatever. <laughs> you listen to these type of artists, and that's another image that you're trying to project. I mean, like, it's meant to be multi-dimensional. I'm curious, so pa Pandora, SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, Spotify. Spotify. Color Berlin. Nice one. Very good. Color Berlin. Fire. 
So Lex is Cold Berlin is pretty fun. What's it called? Cold Berlin, yeah. Back in the day, obviously, word of mouth was like the biggest, you know, conveyor of music. Like if I, if I wanted to share, there's a new artist. An artist named Odyssey, and I would tell my friend, there's this guy named Odyssey, let me give you my tape, let me give you his tape or something like that. I'm telling you, I'm not telling you to look it up, I'm not telling you to download it. <laughs> okay. Uh, my friends and I share music that way too, but it's still not, it's, it's like they can click on that link and then not even listen to the song that I sent them. They can just go to that app. If it's through Spotify, they can find their own music. They don't even have to listen to what I'm saying. So it's different than word of mouth. Like, if I'm telling you to look up, you know, Alexander London, you're going to look up Alexander London. You're not going to look up who sounds like him or any, you know. I think word of mouth is very relevant. That's how I find out about it. And I'm always like on Instagram putting up songs that I listen to. I'm always talking to Odyssey all the time. And then Samba, um, who else am I listening to? Anderson Pack. Like a lot of people, my friends, they know if I'm putting something up, like they gotta go listen to it. It's different. I don't complain about your little daddy. <laughs> All of my other people could. Yeah. I'm not listening to it. I don't it's, know them. You, know, you, all, you all prefer albums and playlists? I don't know. 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 I a very spiritual thing. The mainstream media, I feel like they push out what they want to control the minds of the masses with, you feel me, which is all that negative shit. But I feel like it's up to us individually to want to do better for ourselves so we feed ourselves better because we are in control of what we listen to. We are in control of what pops, you feel me? We feed the media as a society so if we individually and collectively straighten up and discipline ourselves enough you know what i'm saying don't you feel as though that perspective is self-oriented because you started off by saying music is spiritual but that's denying it's that not, some spirits are negative not, well, spirit, which and that we are but, but we're yin and yang so that you need negative shit and positive you do, shit. but, but you do you want a world where all music is positive Nah, I didn't say that. I didn't say that, but I didn't say that because I listen to, I listen to, hold on, hold on, because, listen, look at my shirt. My shirt say good over evil, duality, you know what I'm saying, over. So at that, because it's not equal. You because feel me? It's we dealing with so it's serious. We dealing no. listen, we living in a very perilous time. Society is at a point where it's never been. You gotta understand us being black people, they get into us in our minds. You feel me? It ain't my control, it ain't my slavery, but at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta be able to read between the lines and listen. You like what you feed yourself daily. What you eat, what you digest, what you see, what you breathe in the air. Has it, <laughs> Society has been here before, but not at this pace, though. Not at this pace, though. You know what I'm saying? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. Holocaust, Holocaust, Germany. The Black Plague, medieval times. Slavery. Slavery. Like, this place, the world has been dark for a long time. Like, cities in the yeah. three months we did, three, four months, yeah. all around the world, through the interior of America, places that none of you all go. What you're experiencing now, the ability, huh? Or are you talking on average? Are you talking on average? 
It should be mandatory, mm -hmm. yes, but it is a privilege to have art as, art as a higher purpose. The average person in the world cannot use art for a higher purpose because of where they are in their day-to-day -day lives. My family comes from the Sudan, and I always grew up listening to my father's music, where most of the music was just about love. Every song was, like, all over the time. It's like, and I was like, why is every song about, about love? Like, people are dying, it's, 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 it's a civil war. You know, my neighbor died of a tooth infection. Why isn't there a song about people dying from tooth infection in Sudan? But it hasn't reached that way where people are making music necessarily for a higher purpose because the day-to-day -day lives are at that forefront. We are in a privilege to appreciate music that is good for us, that's good for the soul, where most people aren't there. In the world, most people aren't there to have that privilege to have music other than entertainment first. And that goes back to popular music. Why, why is popular music popular? Because the primary function for most people is that music is entertainment first. We, as privileged people, use music for more than entertainment. And we want the rest of the world to do but the same, but we can't. who determines that? That's an assumption. You do. You interviewed everybody and heard what they listen to music for? No, not at all. We, we, we clearly listen to music for multiple reasons, but I mean, in, in the majority of the world, on average, don't have the privilege to listen to music for a higher purpose. <laughs> Which is why popular music is popular. If you disagree, why is popular music popular? Why is music? I mean, if I sing a song, that's music. No, why, why is popular music popular? Why is it that a song can be a hit with millions of people who are vastly different? Because somebody's paying to have it put on the radio and the TV, but like, I don't. I'm. I think we're talking about two different things, to be quite honest. Well, I'm, I'm saying popular music is popular because it's entertainment. And people want entertainment first. So you disagree, so why is... What no, I don't disagree with that. I disagree with the statement that you said that everybody listens to music for entertainment. I didn't say everybody. Okay. You said most people on average. And I said, how did you get, how did you, how did you come to that conclusion? Let's go to a club. Traveling. Let's go to a club. Yeah, I was about to say, like... And you don't see that as a privilege. You don't see that you're in a place where you can listen to music. I can sing a song, and that's music to me. I don't have to turn on the radio, and that, and it doesn't have to go through a studio for it to be music. I can beat on the table, and that's music. So that's where I'm coming from. That's all I'm saying. Are you an entertainer yourself? Is that entertainer? Are you an entertainer yourself? I am not an entertainer myself. I don't, I don't think it has to do anything about social economically. It's in an individual state where people <coughs> have the ability to listen to music for more than just entertainment. It can happen to any person. But do we, do we all come from families where we could say the majority of people in our families? I personally can't. My family, my mother's side is from Southeast DC. My father's side is from Khartoum, Sudan. No one in my, majority of people in my family don't listen to music for any other reason other than entertainment first. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a point of access. Like if you have, access, you don't have, if you're on a social economic mm -hmm. underbelly, you don't have access to the privilege sure. to look up things. You don't have that ability. I you agree. have to go to work. You see, you hear, you visualize, you are interact with things that come at you. And, and this maybe is why that I think that music is popular. Yes, that right. is why popular music is popular. And there's a problem. There's a capitalistic problem around that, but it's not your fault. It's, no, absolutely it's, and, not. And, and yeah. it's still, there's still an escapism about it. 
talking about this. So, one fact that you didn't mention was DJs. DJs used to break records. DJs you. don't break records anymore. So, yeah. if we want to talk about accountability, let's also talk about DJs. Don't play what's popular. If you know your homeboy song is hot and you love it so much and you t retweet it in this and third, play it so people can know about it because everybody plays the same shit all the time. So, you want to talk about accountability? Look to your DJs because I'm pretty sure everybody this weekend is going to be in some club or some bar and y'all going to be jamming to the same shit that you jam to every fucking weekend. Everybody wants to listen to old shit back to Biggie this time the third. Listen to new people. Listen to new shit. Everybody was talking about the same people. Cole, Kendrick, who else? Y'all kept talking about 2 Chains, all these other people. There's so many other artists out there. And my said, sometimes they get mad. I'm not even going to front like managers be like, yo, this is not popular this time the third. But it's like... I can't play the same shit all the time. Every fucking weekend, people come here and listen to the same thing. <laughs> so you also have to look to your DJs, and I think that somebody mentioned selection. I think. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, like selection. So you know why? Because Joe K, he digs through SoundCloud, he finds artists that you never heard of, and he plays them, and you're like, oh shit, I like him. He reminds me of this and that third. Right. I'm not gonna lie. Like, lately, selection been kind of on the same wave as far as the sound and playing <laughs> but they used to play other people. Taste makers in general. Yeah. Taste makers in general. Not, we could just be like, you know, you were talking about Shorty Redhead, you were talking about music's coming at you in your neighborhood. But it's like, I deflect all that shit. But you have that privilege. It's not even a privilege. It's yeah, about. It's a privilege. Privilege. Huh? It sounds so much nicer. How many are you on when you're at this creative Actually, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I'm chill right now. You know? Dang, it's so much fun. I'm pretty good. Now, let's talk though. Let's talk just to kind of dig a little bit deeper. But I really think it's about. Your, your, your intellectual skills on how you're digging. Because if you're out here saying, oh, two chains, of course we got vibes, you know what I mean? I'm gonna work with the two chains in the gym. All right, cool, that's his vibe. You feel me? But on the daily, he's not bumping that 24 7. Because your mood changes. Music reflects your mood. So that's when your intellect kicks in. You dig what I'm saying? All right, so real quick, you my man. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> there are, there are definitely valid merits on both sides of the argument. And I just want to, I wanted to just talk about my own personal experience as far as the privilege that he's talking about. Listen, it goes far beyond what, we're talking about music right now, but there is a definite, a social economic privilege that he's talking about. I just spent eight days in Haiti, okay? I just came back on Monday. So the privilege that he's talking about, sure, are any of our intellects caged by any physical thing? No. So, but what he's talking about is the, the, the standard of living that we have here in a first world country where I have a job, I can go to a corner store, and I have access to an iPod, and I can just cycle through songs. That's something that all of us just, it's so, it's so normalized that it's not even something we think about. Yeah. But me being in Haiti just a couple of days ago, you have, there's literally part, I mean, I love my country. Love my country. There's beautiful parts that I will defend Haiti to, 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 to teeth. But, but, yeah, I, I will. But there's, there's, there's realities, like he said, if you grew up, like, there's a part of Haiti called Seek the Soleil. If you grew up in Cite du Soleil, where there's literally, there's just shacks built on top of each other. And you have kids, those parents who are so poor, who give their kids up to privileged people, middle class and rich people, offer their kids as servants. Because usually the deal is, if we take in your kid as a servant, some masters who are nice enough may send that kid to school. Now you 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 you, you got to understand it's something that a lot of first world people don't understand like there's a different level of reality that people are facing so when he's talking about privilege it's 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 not to insult us it's not an insult but it's a reality that we have to acknowledge because that kid does not those kids work growing up and working in places like Haiti India Indonesia Sudan Somalia, you know what I'm saying? These people don't have the privilege of thinking about the abstract reasoning of of this song selection that, you know, let me 
Uh, let me five. let me just intellectualize and philosophize about. It. They don't have this privilege. They just don't. If when when they gotta worry about whether they'll be alive in a few hours or not. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a reality. It's, so it, it is a reality, and we do have privilege. That, that, that's just that's just it. We have our own issues. That's not talk to about this conversation in those the issues countries that we deal with. But it's real, and I'm finished. <laughs> I always live my life by a phrase, uh, inspiration promotes elevation. And as a rapper and an artist in today's music age, um, you don't have to necessarily get into names, but how does listening to music for you affect the music that you create and that you put out? I'm confident by, by everything. Um, most travel, observe, I feel like rap is such a beautiful experiment where it's been taken around the world like a petri dish and dropped in and you just get to observe it and how it's evolved and changed and mutated across the world. And I'm constantly inspired by that. You know, I listen to a lot of different genres of music and as a producer, I'm also listening to things sonically, dynamically. I'm inspired by the people's chord progressions, things I think about, uh, soundscapes, etc. I, I just keep an open ear for inspiration in general. And in all aspects, I get a lot of inspiration for music from furniture design. Like furniture is one of my biggest things that inspires me to make music because it, it focuses on not sacrificing aesthetic and quality. And you can create things that are high quality but still pleasing at the same time, which is what I think best music is. So it, it, for me, it comes from everywhere. Mm -hmm. I had a question as well. I didn't want to sit there and have feedback. It's a whole different shot. For the room in a way, I don't want everybody to kind of like chime in and kind of turn into this big like rant and raving. Like I've heard, I've heard a lot of, I've heard a lot of like people speaking like musical taste uh, and where it comes from. You hear a lot of the same names, but I think an important question here when we talk music is what inform your taste. Like you can't teach taste per se. Like it helps. So my thing is like, for me, my musical taste kind of went from I'm a kid from Philadelphia, so like you said earlier, street rap. I grew up off of that, but then my parents are older, and my parents had me in their late thirties, so. I grew up off of soul music too, so those are my two earliest, those are my two earliest points of reference for music. Like a lot of street rap, a lot of soul music. But I went to school in Atlanta, I did my undergrad in Orleans. So I also like saw Gucci Mane. I saw from the rip. So like, I went from the, I went from being like the pompous rap fan, like all them big ass school lyrics and miracle spiritual, all that. But then I get experience. <laughs> but then I get experience. I get I get to experience all these southern rappers in their natural space, and I understand it now. I contextualize a lot different, so like, that's kind of informed a lot of where my. That's what I'm saying. So I think that you being Sunni in DC, so you got go-go. So like the way you hear drums is way different. The way y'all hear drums in DC is way different everywhere else. So it's like it's like room So like I think a question for you and the room is kind of like what's the next conversation? How do you contextualize music? Like what informs your taste level because like, everybody can't listen to you like I said you can't listen to these lyrical spirits all the time like, it I think I, I don't think there's an answer for that because we're, we're all unique in our, in our own way it's, it's our life circumstances that yeah. have shaped not only music but how we perceive everything how we learn how we process information how we process new experiences is based on past experiences so we're all different I'll say for me um, I call it the great divide it's around 1995 me and all my cousins, we have very different walks of life. Uh, my mother gave me to my father to raise me. And, and I was raised in Prince George's County in a middle class home. Well, my mother grew up in poverty. The rest of my cousins grew up in poverty in the Southeast. Now, before 1995, we was all listening to the same thing. Exactly, we was all listening to Child, KRS One, Rock Kim, Native Tongues, everything. Something happened around 1995 when Child came out with a new album, but it wasn't on the radio anymore. But I heard it and I went looking for it, but my cousin did. And I brought it to him and I said, Yo, y'all know Child got a new album? Like, so they just stopped listening to Child. I was like, well, well, we grew up listening to Why y'all listening? Because I'm listening to this now. They was listening to it on the radio. But I was like, But they got a new album. We used to like this yesterday. Why we don't like this today? And some people spoon fed music, some people seek music, and it's a preference. When fast forward now, all my cousins listen to everything from the South. And I grew up being counter that, anti the establishment. So I grew up on Raucous, you know, as being anti that. And now, fast forward, I listen to everything, you know? But at one point, we both listened to the same thing. We came from very different walks of life. Next thing you know, we don't listen to the same things anymore. Uh, I don't necessarily know that. That's life circumstances. 
Yeah, it's crazy how I was gonna add and just say it's crazy how music does develop because I was raised in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and York, Pennsylvania. My dad was out of white. Yeah, I was just having an outlet. But yeah, all the But yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, so yeah, it was just like, like wow. it, was, it was a weird thing where all these suburban white kids was like, yo, yo, we gotta listen to hip hop because our parents hate it and we love it now. And I was like, yeah, I, yeah, I've been around from like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But that was their thing because it was so, it was so anti mom, it was so anti my parents, it was so anti as a culture. So. It's just weird. It's like it's like it's like I want to I want to answer your question. How I developed like like I guess my music and stuff. Like I'm from Queens, so we I grew up on shit like Nas and shit like that. 50 LL, Run DMC, I lived down Far Rockaway, Scott Bundy, all of that kind of thing. So that that stuff kind of molded me. But I was like a kid. I really wasn't outside like that. So when I got of age to be outside. I stopped listening to musical words in it. I started listening to like just instruments. I listened to a lot of K Fernanda now. I listened to a lot of Mozart. I listened to a lot of like just just music because nobody's telling my story. So I tell my own story. You feel me? It's not really heard by the masses, but I fuck with it. You feel me? I start my day to my shit. I can't start my day to two chain shit because I'm not two chains. You feel me? So that's how 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 it, how it came up for me. Music is literally and then and then and then being from New York. New York is jazz. I don't know what anybody else is from, but New York is jazz. If you you get high and listen to classical music and walk down the New York street. That shit is like Tom and Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we're actually about to wrap up, but there are a few people in the space that are still here. So I'm going to start with you, in music a different way. I'm not going to shout them all out, but there is one person I'm going to shout out. Also because her father is taking a new venture bringing back Murder, Inc. So she, I remember Angie here had a really, she had a different experience growing up in music. So we're talking about how, you know, our parents had influences when it came to music and things like that. Is there anything that you want to say? I mean, for me growing up, like, with my dad, I grew up with, like, strictly, like, old school music, like the San Francisco, the Angelos, the Al Green, you know, Stevie Wonder, like, that's what I grew up with. And, like, it really wasn't until that I went to college that I really started getting into, like, the whole, whole trap music and, you know, like, artists. Like, I, obviously, like, Little Uzi wasn't out when I was in college, but, like, artists like that, I can't, like, like, right now, like, uh, like, you know, so, like, that, for me, that was, like, my upbringing, so that pretty much, like, influences, you know, how I listen to things, and, you know, when I feel like listening to, you know, lyricists, and when I feel like just listening to, like, you know, like, the little Uzis and the trap music and stuff that doesn't really make sense, but it sounds pleasing to me at the moment. Um, <laughs> can I can I shout you? No, I'm joking. <laughs> no. I don't doubt myself. I mean, no, I'm not gonna do that. I mean, I guess just for me, um, you know, just kind of listening to what everybody kind of said tonight, like different things where it kind of got a little spicy, you know, and a little testy and stuff like Thank that. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, like I think one of the one of the ways that music has impacted me so much, and one of the ways I guess I've allowed it to do so is that I compartmentalize my music, mm -hmm. where it's like, it's two things. Like, number one, I, comp I compartmentalize it. So, you know, I understand, like, you know, the guy who's right here, Chris, is my roommate. You know, Chris always teases me because I, I can listen to some, like, some hood shit at, like, 9 in the morning. He'll be like, yo, dog, I can't do that. Like, <laughs> I can't do that shit, but I can. Um, but it's like I compartmentalize it. So it's like, I, I, I've, once I realized that everyone has a space, where everyone can have a space in music, music became a lot more enjoyable for me. Mm -hmm. I might not like Little Yachty's music all the time, but he has a place in it. Right. I don't like Tiger's face. <laughs> he, he has a place in music. Do you get what I'm saying? 
And from, from that, I'm sorry. I know we're right here. Now we're right here. We're right here. Uh, but like, but no. And then, and then on top of that, like, you know, everybody's gonna like different things, and everybody's gonna process stuff a different way. Like, I was raised in a very unique situation. Like, my mom was a rapper, and my dad was a DJ. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mom got pregnant with me. And she either had to choose to go on tour or go to school, and she chose school. And my dad went on tour. You know what I'm saying? And you know how they raised me to understand music and process music. You know, shaped my career. I'm a music writer, so I write about music now. And like those two things just come kind of compartmentalizing because everybody's like, oh, this stuff is popular. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. Like sometimes you just gotta like just enjoy it, man. Like, yo, like I, I like Thug. I like Catronada, I like Sango, I like I like I like I like T Grizzly, yes. who I think is probably one of the hottest rappers yes. out right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just one of those things like sometimes discussions is cool, but yo, just listen to the music and just enjoy that shit, man. Like that's facts. I don't gotta argue and get all spicy and shit. On that note, yes. I I along with Free speech. We thank you guys for coming out tonight. Um, we're kind of doing something different. So we're looking to take breathing space outside of Brooklyn. <laughs> so if you are going to you know, post about tonight, please use hashtag breathing space BK. Um, yeah, so we switched it up a little bit. If y'all been here before, we've gone through a couple different hashtags. But breathing space BK is the hashtag we're going to go with for Oh to Babel, um, it's fitting if you guys can agree with that. Um, free, did you want to say anything? Uh, mostly that I appreciate y'all for coming. Uh, uh, I wasn't here quite in the beginning part, um, but uh, I want to say that this whole thing about music, especially pertaining to hip hop, so Jerry had made a point about it as well. It's really about knowing your history. If you don't have a sense of your history, then you, you kind of don't know how you're planning yourself out to the future. I got younger brothers, I got nephews and nieces, and just like some of y'all who grew up with somebody who had a little bit more of a foundation separate from y'all, y'all have more of a balance on how you are now. If you're raising your kids or you're around somebody who's pretty much doing the same thing that you're doing, you don't really expand. It's just like traveling. So, it's and, and this whole beef about the, you know, the trap and the rap, I'm 42. I'm gonna tell y'all like this. This this whole trap thing is its own thing, but it ha it's a part of this hip hop culture because it's not really rap music. It may not have lyrics to it, but it's the vibe and everything that everybody's working with. It may be as repetitive as it needs to be, but that's a part of hip hop. Right. That's just, the father of learning is repetition, correct? Yeah. And that's where hip hop teaches at its core. So. It plays its part, but you gotta have diversity to understand that. If you don't have that, you don't have proper context, you kinda think it's all that is to be. Thanks. Stop from that, y'all. Stop from that. I don't want anybody to leave right away. I want you to talk amongst each other. Oh, I'm about to go. Hey, the conversation is at the end. I'm gonna play some music and we can vibe out, have some drinks, take care of my bartenders. They're gonna take care of y'all and enjoy the rest of the night. One last shout out Amir Odyssey. Shukran. Oh. <laughs>